Until this week, I had not used a research log. And that may be surprising since I'm the creator of Evidentia Research Program. But this week, I have used at least 12 different research logs preparing for this episode. We're going to look at how a research log can help you and how the various programs that you may already have can produce a research log for you. And if you stay till the end, you'll find out which research log I've decided to use. And you may be surprised by my choice. Next on the Genealogy Software Showcase. Hello friends, my name is Ed Thompson and I am the host of the Genealogy Software Showcase. As advertised this week, uh, I've been playing around with several of the different genealogy programs and looking at the research log functionality that they provide. Now, what is a research log? Well, research log is a planning tool that you can use to kind of plan out your plan, your plan, 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 plan. That you can plan, <coughs> plan your attack on your research. And they're particularly good when you're doing a research trip, so you have some idea ahead of time of what you want to look for, what you're trying to prove, what your research question is. But even if you're sitting at home, you'll, you'll find that a, a research log can be invaluable in helping you to organize your research, remember what you've already done, and prepare for your research in the future. Now, I'm going to show you first kind of how we're going to attack this particular pro, uh, this particular uh, episode. And let me make sure I get the right screen here. So what you're seeing here is just my notes from the episode. And there's two pieces to a research log. The first is the log itself. And generally the log will have some sort of title or a research question that you want to try and get answered. Or in some cases it's as vague as a person's name. And then there'll be a description. And then there'll be a series of tasks or to do that you want to try and um, accomplish in order to try and get, find an answer to your research question. Now, sometimes a research log can be tied to an individual, and sometimes it can just be a general research log. Now, if you look at the what I have on the screen right now, um, I'm going to try and test the functionality of both of these types of research logs in the various programs that we look at. So the first one will be a general research log. In other words, it's not going to be tied to any person. And the plan is I want to identify the various land record databases that I have access to. Um, and then there's a description for that. And then a task under that would be to identify the land record databases at the American Ancestors uh, website, which is uh, the New England Historical Genealogical Society, and find out what, what databases do they have where I can look at land records, whether they're indexed or not. Now, if I was to add another task, I'd add one for Ancestry, and I'd add another task for Find My Past, and I'd add another task for My Heritage. And the end product that I hope to end up with would be a, a database of databases, a list of the various places that I can go to to search land records. Now, at the heart of that is my person-specific research task. I My uh, brick wall is my fifth great grandfather, David Thompson, and one of the things I'm really curious about is how he got his property in New Hampshire. So, at the research log level, my second research log is focused on identifying the land records for David Thompson. And what I'll do is I will use the land record, the land record resources that I identified in the first research log exercise to begin to get down to, I want to search the American ancestors databases, I want to search the ancestry databases, etc. Now, I'm not actually going to do these tasks, but these are the, uh, these are kind of the, the logs and the tasks that I want to set up that will give me two different logs and will provide me kind of a plan of attack in addressing David Thompson's uh, land acquisitions. Now the only other, other thing that I'm going to be working with potentially is some of the research logs will let me add some notes uh, and the notes might be things that uh, have, I already know that might guide me in my research. 
for the research log that's specific to David Thompson, the land I'm looking at is in Guilford, New, Ham- Guilford, New Hampshire. Well, Guilford was once Gilmanton. Belknap County, the county it's in, was once Strafford County. The whole thing was once a part of Massachusetts. So I, I've noted some dates here, and it would be helpful to include that in the research log. Now, the other thing you'll find in some research logs are actually citations or a list of the sources that you've already checked and what you discovered at those resources. And we'll look at some research logs that take that plan of attack as well. So let's get started. The first thing I want to do is jump in and we're going to start with a program that I've not worked with before because I could not get it to run. And that's the Family Tree Builder Tree Builder program from MyHeritage. If you watch the past episodes, you know that I had tried in the past to get it to run on the Mac and on the PC and it failed miserably. I'm not quite sure why. This time around I had much better luck and so I decided to start with this particular program. Now, we haven't reviewed any other parts of this program in the past, nor are we going to take the time to do that now. I'm just going to focus on the research log functionality. So, where where am I going? Well, now, I I will admit that I'm going to be doing a little hunting and pecking because I've done 12 different programs in the last five days, and they all handle this and put things in different places. So, if I hunt and peck a little bit, uh, you'll know why. But on Family Tree Builder, on Family Tree Builder, it's under the View menu, and it's the very last item, and it's called To Do Tasks. Now, what I found as I worked with these various programs is some of them called them research logs, some of them called them tasks, some of them called them to-do lists that had tasks or to-do items in it, And some of them did both. In other words, they had the high-level log with tasks uh, at a a lower level. In Family Tree Builder, we see it's really just a a list of to-do tasks. So there's not really the concept of a log, but there is a list of things that that you want to accomplish. So here you see I've I've entered two of them. Uh, I want to search Ancestry. Let's see if it pops up. Yeah. I want to search Ancestry for land records referencing David Thompson. Um, and that's what I've noted here, and I would put some, some notes in that. Uh, most of the task programs will let you prioritize that, prioritize them, and they'll also let you set a status, in this case not started. And the difference between what I would consider a general task and a person's specific task is this bottom half of the screen where I can add a person. And I can add more than one person. So uh, maybe I'm looking at uh, a census record and I'm looking for five different people in that same census record. I could list them all here. Uh, So let me me show you, uh, I'll I'll enter one uh, of the general tasks. And if you excuse me here, I'm gonna do a little cutting and pasting. So if you remember the, come on, there we go. Uh, If you remember, my general uh, log was to identify land record databases. Since this is not at the log level, but is at the task level, I'll jump right to, I want to identify the various uh, land record databases I have access to on uh, American ancestors. And I'll add uh, a short description to remind me what what my plan is and what I hope to get out of it. And I hit OK. And you see here that now I have another uh, entry in this database. Uh, Two of them happen to reference the same resource, which is American Ancestors, but there's zero people associated with it. And in fact, if I filter on David Thompson, you'll see I only see the tasks that are assigned for my research of David Thompson. Now, the I, I'm going to point this out now um, because you'll see it in other programs. But that one of the shortcomings in this particular uh, approach is that there's nowhere to put my results, okay, except for capturing the results in Family Tree Builder itself, uh, and that tends to be very conclusion based. So. 
it's more difficult to collect, you know, a, a wide variety of, of evidence, some of which will be uh, applicable and, and some of which will not. If I go back to edit the task, yeah, I, I mean, I could add to the description what I found when I researched there, but it's really not friendly to that particular exercise. So um, that is what I found there. Now, is there, there was, I can save it to file. And I believe what it saves it as is a uh, common delimited file. But there, it, there's no report. It's just a, a list of tasks that I end up with there. So that is the research log capabilities of Family Tree Builder. In this case, they use a task approach. Um, Jan Murphy says, I had better lucky at logging when I write down what I want to look for in advance, a records wish list. Yeah, that's an excellent use of a research log. Lewis says, I use Family Tree Builder, but I've never used the to-do tasks. Yeah, Lewis, it's not that great. Um, but uh, we'll provide, um, uh, I'll provide you some things that we can do outside your favorite program also that um, will help fill this gap for you. And I see that uh, our friend Dear Myrtle has joined us. How you doing, Mert? Glad to have you with us. All right, so the next program I'm going to look at, because I randomly stacked it this way, is Jan Murphy's favorite program. I'm looking at Family Historian. And that's one of the ones I think I gotta hunt a little bit for. Um, give me one second here, edit. No, view, uh, research notes, is that it? Ah, okay. So in Family Historian, um, they have the concept of research notes and if you try to create a, a research notes, and here it's in, it's in the same tabbed uh, windows where you get lists of individuals, notes in general, sources, repos, uh, media, uh, places, and then the last one is your research notes. And if I try to add a new research note by going to the Add menu and add a research note, it actually gives, <coughs> gives me three options. It gives me uh, an option for a log, an option for a plan, and an option for tasks, individual tasks. So let's check out each one. If I go to log, and I went to the other screen, so let me pull it over. <coughs> You'll see that uh, what, it, what it's really inviting me to do here, a little mouse problem, is um, it, it looks like a very, um, what I would consider traditional research log approach. It uh, invites you to give it a title. And let's go ahead and do that. Um, I may duplicate some of what I did earlier when I was testing it. But uh, I'm going to identify, let's do the general one. Um, the type of entry is a log at, to differentiate it from the plan and the tasks. I want to enter a date, and uh, you know, and usually it's a date. What I've seen mostly is the date that the log itself was created, but it could also be the date that I'm working uh, with this log. But let me just add a, a description. Um, just give me a second here, and my description would be that I want to identify and document the land record databases I can use in my research. And the research activity in this case might be um, check ancestry, um, check uh, American ancestors, or I could put the uh, website name. Uh, and then there's a, a column for the results. What, what did I find out when I did that task? And what date did I do that task on? So the date I, the date I attacked this and what my results were. And keep in mind that whatever your research activity is, they may not occur on the same day. So, uh, and matter of fact, they're likely not to. Now, will this give me what I'm looking for? Well, I could in the results field I could uh, add each database that I found, probably with a link. 
Um, I would actually like to create a citation, which I could probably do there. I want to see, will it, yeah, it will. Um, so I, I can go multi-line in this. And um, this is a, a, a pretty traditional looking research log. And I can print it off. Um, I had to actually ask on the website um, uh, how, to, how to do that. Uh, and, and I know it can be done, um, but I'm not going to take the time to do that now. So here I've got my research log. Uh, it's a duplicate of my research plan um, that I had here. Can I reorder these? Oops. Excuse me. What are the options? Um, okay, nothing there I need to, need to worry about. So now I've got a research log. Let's take a look at the research plan. We double click on that. Now this is very similar, but it's more of a, a Word document sort of thing. And let me open up a new one because I, I've deleted some things here when I was working with that because I didn't need them. But if I do a new one, I have to remember go up to the top, go to research note, and go to a plan. Uh, you'll see here that it has a place for a title and, and a date, similar in a description. Um, and then if you have a focus person, you would enter their name here. It asks you to identify what your goals or objectives are. And this is a, um, uh, this is a way to really focus. What, what do I want to accomplish with this research plan? You know, in my case, I want to build out a list of uh, land record databases and within the various uh, online sites that I have access to, so I know where, where to go to to knock out my research. Um, list everything you know to help you with your uh, objective. That's when I realized that it, if I was doing a person-specific one, and did I do one here? Well, let me, let me knock this out. Uh, it invites me to form a working hypothesis. It invites me to identify the sources, and this is a, a, a very good feature. If you know what books you want to look at at the library, what source records, uh, what microfilms you want to attack when you, when you get there, you can map them out ahead of time, and you can actually create a, a citation for them ahead of time, even though you don't know whether you're going to use it, or, use it or not. Because you may want to reference it in some way and say, I checked this, there's nothing there, don't check it again. Uh, and then the detailed work. What did, what did I do and what did I find? Okay, so this is providing a place to document my results. Um, so I, I like this one. I, this, this one impressed me. And let me look at one of the other plans that I did ahead of time. So um, here you see I, what was my goal. I want, I want to know what land records. I, I Talking too fast. I worded my goals as questions. What land records exist for David Thompson? And how did David Thompson acquire the land in Guilford, New Hampshire? That's what I really want to know. Um, but I'd like access to all of his land records in general. And then if you remember down here, um, when I was putting together the exercise, there's some notes that will help me in that research when I'm, look, when I'm trying to decide where to look. So, you know, am I looking in Gilmanton or am I looking in uh, um, Belknap? Where are the winds? Strafford County uh, split off from Gilmanton County. Um, where did those records go? And those are things that I'm going to want to know. So the list known facts section actually is very helpful. Uh, I didn't care about a working hypothesis because I have no idea. And I don't have any other sources identified for this. And then here is where I would uh, come up with a list of well, I would hopefully come up with a list of land records that exist and maybe even answer my uh, David Thompson question. Okay, so I, I like this one. Um, and what's this all button? Yeah, okay, so this just treats it as a, uh, a, as a table. And then if we look at tasks, you'll see here uh, it's, it's very similar to the research log. Except I'm going to I'm going to come down a level, and instead of saying high level, uh, I want to identify all the databases. I'm saying here, hey, tell me what the databases are at American Ancestors. And again, I can do a task description. I can indicate the status and what date I completed it. So 
in summary, family historian has three different ways to create research logs. The plan, the log, the plan, and the tasks. And of these, I think my favorite is the, is the plan. Um, so, you know, tell me what you think uh, about it in the, uh, in the comments. And let me check real comments real quick. Uh, Dan says, research plans and research logs are two different things, but some of these pieces of software blur the lines between these entities. Absolutely, Daniel. And uh, Daniel, I recognize you from the Evidentia community. And guess what I'm working on for Evidentia 4? Okay. And J. Ray has joined us. Good to see you, J. Ray. Okay. So that's um, Family Historian. And this happens to be version number 7. What's next? Depends on how I stacked it. Family Tree Maker. So this is the latest version, 2019, of Family Tree Maker. And here I'm on the People screen. And... Family Tree Maker's um, uh, research log functionality is, is actually very simple. I go over to the plan menu, and you see here I have tasks. And this is just a, a, a totally task-based system. So again, um, identify land record databases at Ancestry. What does that look like? Well, I, I just put a description in there. I can change the priority. I can set a due date. And I can give it a category. Here I gave it the category of land records. And then there's a checkbox to indicate if I've completed that task. And if I check it and save it, you'll see here that the, the task is completed. Now, you can see here these are general tasks. Uh, this is checking the other one. And it knows it's a general task because I added it here. Now, the other thing that I can do um, if I'm remembering this correctly, is I can go to David Thompson, okay? And over here on the right-hand side, is that right? Yeah. Over here, I can add tasks that are specific to a person. So here, I've added the tasks specific to David Thompson. The format is very much the same, and that's why they can show up in the total tasks list database. But there is knowledge that these are person-specific. We go back to the plan and open it up here. Now here it says edit task for David Thompson. So the only, the only, um, it knows it's a task for David Thompson. I can't change it here. I have to go to the person to change who it's for. But in the table here, it it tells me uh, David Thompson land records because that's the category and when it's due if I chose to give it a due date. Now, let's see what we can do about printing this off. So if I go to Publish, and I know I didn't do this with some of the others, but um, uh, let's see, Other, Nope, Charts, Genealogy Reports, Person Reports. Okay, so Person Reports, um, I can do uh, the task list. And this is how that person report would show up. So I could print this off and take it with me to the, um, uh, you know, to with with me to the library, or just have it and stick it in my file, or whatever else. And um, if you click that, I think. No, what did that do? Include. Oh, this just says if you want to include tasks for general tasks for David Thompson. I was looking for a, a way to weed out the general ones if I'm doing a person specific one um, or vice versa, but I did not see that. Um, so this was the one that appeared underneath um, person reports. Let's see what else we've got here. Uh, media reports, don't expect it there. Uh, other, yeah, I didn't see one for printing off a report for the general tasks. Um, but it looks like the general tasks are going to show up on all the other ones. Uh, Jan says, this is uh, FH7, uh, correct? Yeah, the last one I did was Family Historian 7. Um, I don't know that anything changed between 6 or 7 in the um, research log category, um, but it, it, it's easy enough to find out. So back to family, uh, family tree maker. So 
Family Tree Maker takes a task-oriented approach, not a whole research log um, approach. So to uh, Daniel's point, difference between research plan, research log, research tasks. Um, and uh, the formatting uh, is, uh, is attractive enough when you print it off and it's something that you can take with you um, or work from, uh, if you like to work from paper, or you can work straight from this list. It's under change log. Oh, this is just telling me the things I've done in Family Tree Maker since the last time. Okay, so that's it for Family Tree Maker. Next, we're going to look at Roots Magic. And in Roots Magic, um, i got to remember here, because this wasn't where I thought it would be either. Okay, I have to go to Lists Research Manager. And here is a, a research log. Okay, and uh, if I add research log, okay, I, where's the name? Um, is this general or is it specific to a person? Uh, what is the objective of the research log? So that's where I would put my questions. Uh, and then I can add research items. Um, now, the research items, actually, the, the way it's worded here, um, actually is takes the approach of, I've already done this, and I want to capture it. So the research log feature in Roots Magic is more about tracking what you've done than planning what you want to do. Uh, where did I check? What sources did I check? Uh, what were the results of my search, etc.? And you can see that, yeah. Um, so this is how it'll appear. Um, it, if I open up the one I already did, okay, land record database, I want to identify the record databases I can use in my research. And since I haven't done it yet, really I can't fill out any of these fields. Um, I could probably halfway populate it and say, I don't know the date, but uh, I want to look at the ancestry. Uh, no, I cannot type. I did that in the uh, chat. I could not pass a typing test for the life of me. So I want to check um, Ancestry.com. And I've hit OK. And OK, what does it give me here? Yeah. So it, it'll capture a list of my various research item goals. Um, Myrtle asks, Family uh, Tree Maker 2019 has a to-do list, does it not? Yes, that was the screen that I was on. It's under um, planning, planning tasks. Are you, are you in, meaning... Um, to-do list in, in place of tasks, because I did not see that. All right, so let me stay here. Um, but that's not all. So here's the one for David specifically. Uh, you see the difference is it says land records for David Thompson. And if I had done the research, I could capture that in this log. Now, if I remember correctly, though, that's not the only functionality that it provides along the lines of a research log. So if I go to David specifically, and you'll see here, uh, there's a to-do tab where I can add tasks. And so here I've added a task for David Thompson, similar to what I would have added to a research log for David Thompson. And here the task is to search ancestry land records. So I got the ancestry one, let me add um, I think it's this first one I want. And let me let me add another one to show you how it is. So I know I want to add ancestry, but I also want to look at um, uh, American ancestors. So I'll add that, and I'll add my description. Um, I'll hit OK. Boom. And I can, um, uh, I, I have this list of tasks. Now, I'm going to open that one back up. And you'll see down here, I can get very specific about where do I need to do it. And the way I you do that is, yeah, you can't edit this per se. Or can you? 
is you select or create repositories. And if you're familiar with the concept of a repository, you usually think of it as a, as a library uh, I want to go to or a, um, a courthouse would be the repository for some vital records, things like that. But there's no reason you can't do websites as repositories, as I've done in this case. So if I ask it to identify the repository, uh, I gave it a name, and in this case I gave it a website, but it, there's this other information that I can collect that would appear in various reports that would um, allow me to uh, document the repository that I'm looking in. The other thing it'll let you do is send an email, and I'll show you one other feature that Roots Magic has that ties in with that. So here I've got my repositories, and I added the repository I was doing this specific research in. I could also um, have just done one of these, search for land records, and listed all the repositories I wanted to check. So whatever it is that works for you. Now this is the button I thought was interesting, and I didn't press it yet. So I, I don't know what this is going to do. But if it does what I think it's going to do, it's actually pretty neat. Transfer to the research log. So. Remember what I said is that you, the research log is really only useful after you've done the research, except for the creating the header for it. Well, so if you think of the research log in Roots Magic as a repository to save the research that I've done, if I work off these task lists, I hit transfer to research log, I choose the research log I want to attach this to, select it, and I it's, it's auto-creating for me a research log entry, that entry that I didn't want to fill out because I hadn't done the research yet. Um, what were the results? What sources did I check, etc. So this is where I could capture all the various results. Um, so I, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, on the one hand, I felt that the research log itself was a little limited because it was capturing after the fact, but tied in with the to-dos, uh, it makes a little bit more sense. Um, oh, the other thing I was just going to highlight, and it, it's not directly related to research logs. Um, under lists, is it under research manager? No, it was under research manager. Under lists, um, maybe it wasn't under list. Under reports, print a report lists oh maybe this isn't the one that had it um, research reports ah here it is so under research reports I can pull up a report on my repositories um, I'm, I'm not going to do that because there's so many options I can choose well I could just generate it vanilla here's a, a report listing all my repositories um, my research logs let's see what that looks like Okay, so I didn't pick enough information um, to uh, see what that was. I need to select a log. Let's do the one for David Thompson. Um, and that's what my research log uh, would look like. Um, research notes, how is that different? So these are various notes that are in different fields within the database. It includes the... Um, citations for them, but it's not the research notes from the research log, unless I chose to uh, document them, uh, document my findings there. And it's got a source list, and it's got a to-do list, and I can do uh, every to-do in the database, or I can make it person-specific. Let's just do all of them, and here's all the to-dos that I have. And this should include the generic ones, yes. Generic, generic, David-specific, David-specific. So I can print off all my to-dos, even the ones that are generic. Um, but the one I wanted to show you here was also, I, and I showed you before email, um, you can do a correspondence list. And it can be based on the, I didn't do any here, but it can be based on emails that you've sent out or letters that you've sent out and received responses. Could be based on emails you've sent to DNA matches and keep a list of of what responses you got there. So I, I like that feature. Uh, I may play with that some more. But that is the research log functionality within Roots Magic. 
Uh, there is a concept of a research log as a repository for to-do items. And the to-do items can be created ahead of time. And then once you've done them, you can move them into the research log to capture the research notes about the research that you've done. Uh, let me check the to-dos. Let's see. Um, uh, have you seen one not uh, to do a research log? Uh, J. Ray, um, I specifically stuck to genealogy programs, specifically. Um, honorable mention, I mean, you could use OneNote. You could use um, uh, Evergreen, Evernote, excuse me. You could use Excel. And I will give mention, there is a website that is a paid subscription called Research Ties, where you can keep your research log online and have it with you wherever you go. And there's a place to capture sources and things like that as well. But I'm not covering any of those today. I am going to go outside the bounds in a little bit to show you how I'm going to do my research logs in the future, though. But that's off topic so far. Um, Betty Lou, Jan, if you look in the catalog of family search, for the records, and if there's a camera by the microfilm number, then you can look at the microfilm online. The other thing that you can do uh, on Family Search, since you mentioned it, is there is a wiki page on research logs and how to use a research log, and you can actually print off a PDF of a uh, get a printable empty research log that you could uh, fill out there. Um, okay, so keep going here. I think we're we're good for time. That's Roots Magic. Next in my list is Legacy. Now, I had trouble finding it in Legacy, but I did. I did manage to find it um, under View, I believe. And it's right here. It's kind of buried under the third panel uh, under View, and it's to-do list. And I can um, list out all to-dos, general to-dos, uh, because I'm on this page, the to-dos for husband and wife, husband or wife. Let's look at all to-dos. And again, we have a to-do specific approach to research logs. I'll double check at the end to see if there's a log to pull these all together. But here we've got a to-do or task-oriented, uh, a taskless approach to um, uh, planning. Uh, if I double click on one of these that I created earlier, and I, again, I'm doing it from the same um, approach. So my to-do item, uh, I assigned it a category, which I created myself. Uh, there are some that you can choose from, um, but I added land records because mine wasn't, I wasn't specifically looking for deeds or patents or land grants. So I just did land records in general because that's what I wanted. A place for my description and a place for my results, yes. So I could capture my results here in the form of bullet points, in the form of um, citations, uh, whatever I, I wanted to do here. If I did it in citations, I would probably also, or instead of just go ahead and create those citations in um, the source uh, list itself, so I don't have to redo that. If you were going to a physical location, you could add a locality. Um, here's the master to-do locality list. I, I did create one just to, where'd it go? Uh, oh, disappeared. Uh, and then repository. Uh, so I can add or select a repository. Uh, and when I s create a list of repositories, apparently I it pulled a couple out of a, a GEDCOM earlier, but I, I did create my own repository here. Uh, and added it. One of the other things that I like about this is you can geocode the addresses. I think geocoding is kind of cool, but I won't go off topic on that. Too late. Okay, so yeah. Um, again, task oriented approach. I can print it. And let me just preview. I think this will give me everything. And here's my to do report. So I've got a title. Um, I want to look at land records. The locality is Guilford, New Hampshire. So this is, a very, oh no, it's not very specific. So this is the first one. It gives me several blank lines for my notes. And I could use that for notes before I go or to capture my results. Um, here's the next one. 
Here's the next one that's David specific. And because it was David specific, uh, Legacy included um, kind of key vital information about David that I might find useful. Uh, so that was pretty slick. Um, but yeah, so there's a, a to-do report, which I would kind of call a, um, a research log. Um, so, because it, it does kind of pull things together. Um, now there, there are all sorts, by the way, um, all sorts of options here. I could just do all tasks, general tasks, tasks tied to an individual. I could also do tasks tied to a particular repository. So I might have tasks scattered all across legacy family tree in different to-do lists, but I might have, um, uh, you know, 10 of them that I want to tackle next time I'm at the family history library. So I could print off a task list with all the ones specifically for the family history library. My local library has a uh, family history section and I could print off just the specific list for that as well. So that's kind of handy. Um, yeah, so I wanted to check if, let me check under reports here real quick to see if I'm missing anything. No, it's just the to-do report. And, uh, and we've looked at that already. So that's Legacy, and this is uh, Legacy Family Tree 9. Uh, so the functionality is there. Oh, wait a minute, there's a research log button here. That's what I wanted. I knew there was something else. Okay, the research log button. This is a little underwhelming. Um, uh, I'm gonna preview it. It just allows you to print an empty research log, uh, an empty research log that you can take with you. Um, so it's a nice one. Gives you information, place for your ancestor's name, what your objective is, what the locality is, uh, and then the date you did a task, the location, call number is a popular lookup feature to use, a description of the source, and then comments about what you found, what you didn't find, whatever, and then a document number, which I think is for... Um, you use that however you choose to use that. Maybe it's a document that you photocopied and stuck in a folder somewhere and you organize it by document numbers, etc. So, legacy. Pretty good. Um, uh, okay, it looks like uh, Jan and Betty Lou are off to the races here. Uh, Daniel, loving this ad. Great to see how this is handled differently by different software. Yeah, I actually wasn't expecting quite the variety that I discovered uh, when I was doing this exercise. So it, it, it was pretty interesting. And I'm, I'm still going to hold out a teaser. Um, I like a couple of these in specific, but none of these are going to be the ones I use. And if you stay to the end, I'll tell you which, which one I'm going to use. So uh, that is it for the Windows program. And if you've been counting, that's five. So how am I going to do the, I'm actually got some new technology here that allows me to bring the Mac into the same live stream. So let's see if this will work and I can see that it is. Okay, so now I'm on my Mac and um, I have the same uh, program. I'm using Notion by the way, as my uh, Notekeeper um, program right now. And why is this? Okay, because I double click that. So here's that same script I was using so I could do some copy and pasting. And again, to remind you that the exercise is to be able to, gener to do a general log, a log of general tasks, general interest with specific tasks and uh, person specific log with person specific tasks and a, a nice to have is ability to do some notes or source listing ahead of time. So there are two programs I'm going to look at here. The first one we're familiar with is Reunion. And I know we've got some Reunion fans out there. I'm just going to be straight with you. This was a disappointment. 
So the only functionality for reunion related to research logs and to dos um, is this logs tab on the side. And if I want to create a log, which you see here, um, all it is is a text editor. That's all. It's a note more than a log. If I add a new one, I just add a, a title for it here, some way to identify the log, and capture the information uh, in this note. So, and, and, and I looked. I looked in the instructions. I looked on other screens. Um, I was disappointed. So, uh, Reunion is a great program, don't get me wrong. But if you're looking for research log functionality, this is not the place to go. So, that was number six. And I said I'd do six. Now, a little bit, uh, this one was so disappointing, I had to check out another Mac program. So, I added to the list um, Mac Family Tree. Now, I don't, I don't think I've done Mac Family Tree on the showcase yet. Uh, so similar to Family Tree Builder, uh, I'm going to substitute Mac Family Tree for a reunion. We'll pretend that didn't happen. Um, and I've got a, a pretty decent uh, to-do section here. So if you go to the edit, which is the top bubble here, you go down here to to-dos. And if I'm going to add, let me show you what the add new one looks like. It just creates a, a blank screen for me here. Over on the right-hand side is a list of my to-dos, and I can create uh, a to-do here. Uh, so let me do that. Let me do some copy and pasting uh, like I did before. We'll do the general one. Let's see. It's a to-do, not a log. So I don't want a log. I want the task. So copy and paste my information about the task. I'm going to add that as the title. I could add a date. I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, state is open, waiting, in progress, or done. Uh, priority. Uh, some of them do numeric priority systems. Uh, the, most of them have priority. I, I didn't zero in on that. But low, normal, high, low, medium, high, uh, urgent, a lot of different ways to prioritize that. Now this is where it got a little confusing for me here at first um, because it's well, what's an assigned entry and it says no entries have been assigned to this to do yet. So we'll come back to that uh, because I, I thought it had to do with sources but what I can do here is I can add text and I could add the text before I went. I could add the text after I went. Um, let's look at the one I already created here. What did I do here? Here I used the text as a description field. Um, so that was, this was useful for general to-do items. Now, I actually don't know if I took it to the next step. And if I go to a person, Yes, I can do a to-do here that's person-specific. And for this one, it has the title, which is the name of the person, uh, priority, what type is it, and, and types is further research, to check, missing events, performing cleanup. Now, performing uh, um, missing events. One of the features of several of these different programs and I'm not highlighting it today for time's sake because it's kind of a different area, is some of these different programs had other buttons that you could press that would analyze your database or your GEDCOM and generate a list of to-dos for you based on missing or incorrect events. So one of the buttons I thought was going to generate a research log for me, I, I pressed it, and it showed me all, a list of all of the birth events that I was missing that could generate a to-do from. And some of this uh, is tied in here. Uh, I can go to existing to-do. Well, that's just a, a listing to-do from my total to-do list. Um, and I could add it to one of those. 
Um, or, and I could add the date I worked it, and uh, let's say look up land record. Okay. Uh, I create the new to do. And now if I go down back down to the to do list, existing to do, you see it's showing me the entire to do. Um, if I add it to the select, let's see what happens here. If I select it and add this to do to that one. And views, what views does it give me here? I don't know. Now we're gonna, uh, gonna go back over to the uh, edit to do's and see how that appeared there. So I've got the, um, I, I've got the one for Perez Coates and if I go to, or Cots, and if I go to the land record one that I added it to, you see here is the defined entries. So let's back up for a second. I said it didn't have a research log, but the way that you can approach a research log is at this level, I could create kind of a high level to do. And then at the person level, I could create person level to do's and add those to do's, nest them into the higher level to do's. Now, this still created this one. Uh, so it's still in the, the same list of to do's even though it's embedded in that one. And if I double click this, it takes me back to, to uh, Perez uh, and the to-do list there. So um, much better than uh, what was being offered in the other program. Now, if I go down to reports, I can do a, where was it? Oh, I thought, a li reports list to-dos, and I can do a, a to-do list, and I can save the report. Um, it's going to let me increase the size here. Yeah, there we go. So, and, and the report, um, for the most, this is good for a checklist. Done, done, done. In terms of capturing the results, I'm going to enter that data somewhere else in this program. I'm going to enter it in research notes for an individual. I'm going to add that source to my source list, etc. So some of the functionality of some of the other programs, um, uh, in general, the high level to do can act as your research log. The lower level to do's can be added at, can be embedded or treated separately. Um, going back, uh, Betty Lou asks, have you done a video on how to use Notion for genealogy? I have not yet. I'll tell you why in a moment. Um, and then Daniel says, love reunion, but log functionality is its weakest function. I totally agree. And to be totally honest with you, who am I to talk? Because I've got one of the number one research, I'm the creator of one of the number one research programs not tree builders, but research programs that are out there, and I don't even have a research log. A problem that will be addressed, but so I, I can't talk. Uh, just because Reunion doesn't have a decent research logging facility doesn't mean it's not a great program. And whatever you think of it, um, that's for you. So um, that is there. Let's see here. So. I teased a bit that um, after doing the, these, so what, what had happened, um, I had sent out the post that I was going to do uh, 10 programs. And the, the ones I didn't touch on were GenSmarts, which we talked about in the past, and um, Family Tree Analyzer. So that would have given us, that would have brought us up to nine. I was going to do a little more research on research ties. And one of our members... Um, kind of called me out a little bit and said, you know, there's always a snafu that, uh, that occurs. It sucks up some of the time. A lot of times these feel rushed, um, quality over quantity. And I, I gave it some consideration and said, yes. And then I, I looked at what I had to draw from and said, well, I could do six. Um, and so I did the research on all of these, threw in the seventh one because I didn't, 
care much for the sixth sixth one and thought about well how am i going to use these because one of the things i got excited about was i didn't want to go in here and, and research the research log functionality in these programs anymore i wanted to flesh out the two research logs that i started just as a sample and actually start getting to work on them and i thought well how how do i want to capture that information and there's more or less in um factors in each of them that well not in every all of them but i liked the planning approach the the word document sort of strategy of family historian i liked the to-do list and add it to a research log functionality in uh, roots magic um there were things about the legacy one that i liked those those are probably my my three favorites. Um, none of them hit me 100%. And I've been playing around with this relatively new program uh, that's out on the web that I think is going to be, and uh, it's going to give Evernote a run for its money. And to refer back to what we said before, yes, you could use Evernote, you could use uh, Team Note or OneNote, you could uh, use Excel. To me, though, it's all about templates and uh, what templates exist out there that I could tie into. I could use Google Docs. Are there any research notes on Google Docs? And, and there are for all of these. Uh, but I started playing with the program called Notion. And I had explored Notion in the past uh, and liked it. There is some setup work that's complex, but I, I did, since we've got a couple minutes, I just want to show you uh, what I came up with because I think this is what I'm going to use. So let me go back to um, the main screen here and pull up Notion again. Uh, and I'm, I'm not going to go in deep into Notion right now, but it's like a combination between Trello and Todoist and uh, Evernote, uh, OneNote, whatever. It's not just web it is web based although there's a desktop edition but it still syncs up using the web and it is free although there's a paid version mostly for teams so i've created some pages for myself and under my genealogy i've got this uh, genealogy research log that i created and what this is is a table of pages and so here i have same challenge. I've got the research, two research logs. One was to identify land record databases, and one was to land records specifically for David Thompson. I have a column for person. So one of them's empty because it's generic, and one of them's for David Thompson. I got a priority and a status. And if I, I can open up this row as a page, well, what does it give me? Well, I created a template that allows me again here are the uh, columns that i had and then for this page i added a description so how would i describe this particular research log and a section for notes and the notes might be a list it might be uh, i could replace it with just a text block or whatever and then within that i created another database called tasks and here i've got the task to check um, American ancestors. I've got a, ta a task to check ancestry, family search, my heritage, find my past, uh, localities within New Hampshire, etc. And I can capture the status and the date worked. But I'm still wondering, well, where do I put the results? Well, remember, a row in Notion is a page. So let me go to the page. And here I've got uh, a few columns, that, and I could add more. I've got my description of specifically what was this task and a place where I could put my findings. And here I would put down, on a, in a bulleted list, I'd actually put down a, uh, a list of citations from uh, AmericanAncestors.org. Um, so I like to be able to cust customize things, but this is a template that I created with an embedded template within it um, that allows me and I can do different views. So I can change the view to a gallery view and think of these more as cards. 
And if I look at the notes, remember here's here's a person specific log, and within that log I have the notes that I I wanted to add uh, for this, and then within the log I have the here I only had two tasks. I would end up with multiple tasks uh, before I was done. And if I wanted to add a new task, I've created a template for a task. I would just go up to New. I would pick the template, and it would create a new page for me. It takes a second. I would give it a, a, the task a title, and then it would automatically create for me the description and the findings field. So because these are things that I want on each page. So in Notion, um, it makes extensive use of tables. So if you think of Excel spreadsheets, but all of the rows in those tables can be pages. And those pages can reference other pages or other uh, tables. So similar to some of the linking functionality within Evernote. Um, it, I, I've just fallen in love with this yesterday. So, um, but I'm really seeing some of the benefits here. Uh, it, it addresses some of the gaps in Evernote for me, and it um, combines some of the functionality. Uh, I've got other things uh, in here as well. Here, it's just a, um, a to-do list or, to -do or a research log gallery. Uh, if Again, I could go to um, down here to one of the tasks, and I could open it up as a page, and, well, no, I could open... I don't want to open the task. I could display this task table. I could, again, do it as a gallery. And now I've got task cards. And maybe that gives me another way to visualize. And you see here, there's a little page icon that says, by the way, this task is a page. Here, I haven't, whatever this empty one is, I haven't actually created a page for it yet. But as soon as I press this button, it would automatically do that for me. So, um, uh, Somebody asked me, Betty Lou asked me, have I um, uh, done a video on using Notion for genealogy? That is definitely on my to-do list. There's a lot of, um, you know, everyone's done out there, Evernote's been around for a while. There's books on it. There's videos on it. Um, in terms of being, approaching Notion specifically from a genealogy perspective, um, there's a niche ready to be filled. And so I, I am looking into that, and I, I really would like to do that. I need to use it more. Right now, I'm using it as a research log. What else could we potentially use it for in genealogy? Uh, I've got some ideas, and I want to flesh those out and um, attack it from a genealogy perspective. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, at first I thought Notion was just the latest... Um, uh, latest, newest thing, the shiny bells and whistles. But now that I've started playing with it in the realm of genealogy research logs, um, I see some real uses for it. Things that I sort of wanted to do in Evernote that I couldn't quite get to work the way I wanted to. Um, I've got some uh, emails listed here uh, for my genealogy. I started working on some individual pages for houses that I've lived in, just a personal thing. I've started clipping find a grave pages, uh, etc. I think somebody mentioned, uh, just like Evernote, there is a uh, screen clipper that you can load into Chrome. Uh, I don't know if it has Firefox as well. Uh, J. Ray points out that OneNote has a, a screen clipper as well. Um, absolutely, by the, uh, absolutely, if OneNote works for you, Go for it. It's free. It's available. Um, uh, you know, on most all platforms, Mac or Windows. So another another good uh, alternative there. Uh, J Ray Evernote has security breach, and I stopped using it. Yeah, I do think they addressed that. Uh, there was a lot of criticism, um, uh, Jan uh, of them after the security breach, and for them not encrypting things. Um, they addressed that. How, now I'm looking at OneNote. They haven't addressed it yet. So the things aren't encrypted. 
Uh, I'm assuming things are safe right now, but yeah, as, as soon as this gets um, more attention, but uh, I know we're coming to the end here. Um, uh, Jay Ray says, or, or uh, Jan says, I like how it looks. Yeah, there are things you can do to add colors and such. It's not a page builder like WordPress or anything like that. Uh, although more and more functionality is being added. But just to give you an idea, since some of you asked, um, I can add a new page. Um, if I go to, I can add a, a new page here. I'm not going to give it a title. And I can, well, I can, I can just hit slash. And these are all the different blocks that I could use. I could add a to-do list, headings, bulleted lists, numbered lists, toggle lists that would give me embedded lists quotes, dividers, I could link to other pages, I could do a call out, um, I could change the color of the call out because uh, I hate gray, so let's do it in orange. Uh, I could link tables, so I could add a new table or I could link an existing table and say you know what on this page I only want to see these three columns and I want to filter on a field so that I only uh, see rows. So um, show you what I did here. I've got a table for my uh, YouTube videos and for my live screens in one table. Here I've got a copy and embedded that table that just shows me my live streams. And then I can go into the live stream. I don't mind sharing this. And uh, it has a description of the live screen. But it also gives me a list of all the various things I needed to do ahead of time for this live stream. Things I uh, should have done, which I did do actually, um, uh, before I went live. And verify the quality. Yep, I did that. And then I've got a to-do list of things that I have to do after the live stream to kind of wrap things up. Um, so this is the one for this one. Uh, I've got a couple ideas, things I'm working on right now. And yeah, um, but this is pulling from a master table that has live streams and pre-recorded in it, but it's just pulling the live streams out on another page. I could do just pre-record. There's a lot of things you could do here. Uh, obviously, I'm getting excited about it and I'm dragging us um, way off topic. Um, but I will say um, th th there's a lot of things you could do here on Notion. And I think because I'm a developer, uh, it's probably going to be a, a, my go-to place for my um, research logs and my research log tasks, just because I've got a lot of flexibility. It's not tied to any one program. Again, you could do it in OneNote very similarly, Evernote, Google Docs, um, Excel, uh, just whatever, whatever works for you. But um, I'm over over our time today. I hope that you found this uh, live stream useful. We I was able to cover eight programs and give honorable mention to many others. Uh, if you see the potential here for the research logs, you have a lot of software options to help you in the process. So this is um, Ben Ed Thompson. I'm your host of the Genealogy Software showcase. Uh, you can see on your screen now the various things I'm uh, considering for the next episode. Probably next episode I'm either going to do uh, Evidentia or Gramps. Um, I've got several other ideas that aren't listed here. Many that you've all created. I've just started using, uh, moving some of my stuff to, um, uh, to Notion to allow me to do some of my planning online. But um, hey Flo, Glad to have you. Uh, Dear Mert, if you're still here, so glad you could join us. And um, we'll see you next week on the Genealogy Software Showcase. Oh, and please remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Join our Facebook group and subscribe on YouTube. I'm very close to 300 YouTube subscriptions, trying to reach that 1,000 point before summer. So thank you for being with us. And we'll see you next week.